Webheads, we're headed to August, so here are my top 10 most anticipated comics for August 5th. Hey, all my webheads out there, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0 and fans. I am your host, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to bring you my top 10 most anticipated comics for August 5th. This is 2020. Hard to believe we are in August, but we need to get through this 2020 year to jump into 2021, right? So I'm bringing you a big list today, guys. Hopefully, you will enjoy this, and hopefully, this will help you make decisions on what comics to buy, because it's never too early to start that pull list for next week. And guys, if you want to help support that channel, give it that extra push, please go onto my home screen, hit that join button right there. Again, it helps support the channel, and thank you so much for watching. So, guys, let's get started with this week's video by kicking it off with the hot seat. That's right, guys. The Hot Seat is the book that I'm always maybe thinking about not buying, or it's a book that I'm thinking of possibly dropping. But by the time I get to the comic book store, I have to make that tough decision. And that book this particular week it goes to Dark Knights, Death Metal, Legends of the Dark Knights. Jeez, what a title that one is. This is issue one. Now, this book is 48 pages. This is a $6 book. However, this is a tale of short stories about the all the different types of Batmans that are in Death Metal, which I think could be kind of cool. But I think the story that could be interesting and could make this book an actual key is the tale, the origin tale of the Robin King. So that could make this book worth something. Maybe not just this random, you know, Dark Knight tale or whatever the case may be. So I might check this one out. Again, like I said earlier, 48 pages, $5.99. Moving on to the official countdown now. Kicking it off with number 10. This one goes to another Bat book, but this one goes to... Batman The Adventures Continues. This is issue three. This story introduced introduced Deathstroke in the last issue. And basically, it's going to be Deathstroke versus the Batman himself. But he's not going to take him on on his own. He's going to use the Bat family pretty much against him. My only thing about this book is that it's kind of a forgettable story. It's not my favorite. It's not the most exciting. And the artwork is okay for me. I just feel like, again, for a Bat book, it is still too bright, even though it's meant to be like the animated series. I would love to see a darker tone, darker colors, bring it down a little bit. But it's still a decent book, and I'm going to continue to read it, see where the story direction actually goes. All right, next, moving on to number nine. And the next one is a book that... I did not think it was going to be this many pages and this expensive. This one goes to Future Imperfect Maestro. This is the Marvel Tales issue one. Now, this has to do with the story of Maestro and his origin, where he came from, and things like that. But there's other oh, there's going to be different stories involved in this. This is an anthology series. So I thought it was just like this one shot of Maestro, and that's it, and that's all that's done. So I thought that this was pretty cool. And then also, um, this book is 104 pages for $8. I thought it's pretty cool, and it has a reprints in here as well because it collects... Um, Future Imperfect issue one and two uh, back from 1992 when Peter David wrote it. So that's pretty neat too. So I'm going to definitely check this one out and uh, see what it's about. All right, moving on to number eight, Webheads. This goes to books that we thought that weren't going to get printed and only released digital, but it's back. This is Avengers of the Wastelands issue four. Great story. Uh, I love the Wasteland stories. And our heroes now continue their adventures here in Osborne City. So it looks like they're going to be going against the Green Goblin. 
I love this story. I'm just so happy that it's back. And then we got one more issue after that. And then the story concludes. So really great stuff. 28 pages, $4. So if you read these stories in the past, go to your shop, pick them up because we were all complaining that they weren't being released in print. So now that they are, go get them, guys. Moving on to number seven, Webheads. It's another book that went digital and now it's back in print. It's a great Spider-Man story. It takes place in the Gamerverse. This is Spider-Man Black Cat Strikes. This is issue four. Spider-Man versus Hammerhead in this particular issue. And uh, I think this is great. I think this story is phenomenal because it has to do obviously with Black Cat, Felicia, uh, Felicia, Mary Jane and Peter, right? And you were led to believe that Peter had a baby with Felicia and it was kind of all this ploy. It's great character interactions, great story art, just great story all the way around. Lots of action too. So guys, check this one out. Remember, if you forgot that it came out and you're just like, oh, well, I'll have to wait you know, until it comes out in trade. There it is. It's right there for you. Okay, so moving on to number six. This goes to Empire Issue 4. This series is right in the middle for me. I've enjoyed it. My son is reading it as well with me, and we're doing a review series. It's called Father and Son Talk Comics, if you guys haven't checked it out yet. And I feel like, again, this story is just middle ground. I feel like it's not bad. It's not great. It's right there in the middle. We're still yet to see... What makes this book this monumental event besides this alien race that wants to take over the world? We've seen this a hundred times, but <clears throat> we need to see what's at stake here, okay? We finally get the first act pretty much underway where we get to see the Katadi take over the Kree and the Skrulls, and now they're headed to Earth to destroy it. Whose lives will be taken? Why or do they want to just destroy the Earth? Is it because they're just animals, or is there something more at play here? What new characters are we going to be introduced into the Marvel Universe from this event? Will we get any? I don't know. There's still a lot of question marks when it comes to this series. However, I'm not writing it off. I'm keeping... I am have an optimistic feel about this one, and hopefully it gets better as time goes along. So we'll see what happens with it. It's 36 pages. This is a $5 book. All right, moving on to number five. This goes to Black Cat issue 12. Now, this is a series that could have been canceled at any time, right? But I think since the writer has been writing this book, he's had a story to tell, he's had a chance to tell it, and I think this book lasted a little longer than it has because of the covers, one. Two, because it's a spider book, and I think it's been really great. We wound up getting introduced, and this is a spoiler here, that Felicia wound up hacking into Iron Man's uh Stark Industries and she winds up getting Stark Tech and she creates a black cat armor for herself and it looks awesome. I was like, oh man, that's really cool. This story has been slowly getting better. The artwork's been really great as well. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Just can't take it too serious. So we'll see what happens. 32 pages, $4. All right, next, Webheads. We move on to number four. Four And number four goes to Firepower Issue 2. This is that new book that's done by Robert Kirkman. It's a great read. We had the Prelude trade that was released. Then you have the Free Comic Book Day issue that represents Issue 1. Now, from what I'm getting at, you're getting the official release of number one of this book as well on this same date and you're getting issue two so this story is about owen johnson who is a uh, a man who was searching for his parents and he was searching for this mountaintop to get answers and he found this sensei he learned all these powers which is the lost art of the fireball and he wound up leaving this island or this mountaintop to have a real life. And now people are calling him back to go back because his sensei is missing. So really looks like it's a lot of fun. I think Robert Kirkman is writing a good tale here. It could be his 
best story since The Walking Dead, in my opinion. Something a little bit different. Maybe reminds you a little bit of Invincible in a way as well because of the family dynamic. So great stuff here. Check it out. $4, 28 pages. All right, next. <laughs> here is a book coming in at number three that we have not seen in such a long time. This is Star Wars issue five. I'm excited about this. This is a great, great story right now. It takes place between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Probably the best time period for Star Wars fans. And this time, what happens is that Luke Skywalker is going to a planet... And he's looking for a woman that believes may hold the key to his Jedi future. Because at this point in time, he's looking for help to, to guide him in the right direction to be a proper Jedi. But there's kind of nobody there for him at the right, not, right, right now. So when he gets there, there's somebody waiting for him. And that person is... Darth Vader. So I can't wait to see what happens. Long awaited return of Star Wars. This is issue five. Go to the shops, check it out, webheads. All right, next. Coming in at number two, and it falls out of the top spot for the first time in a while. And this goes to Batman issue 96. And you're probably wondering, wow, what's number one, Mike? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. So we got the Joker War part two. I love the Joker War Part 1. I thought it was really, really good. However, there was a lot of exposition. It took a lot of time to kind of set up what was going. But the story itself is, is phenomenal. I love how Joker has all of Bruce Wayne's assets. He's took over Lucius Fox. And now we got, the, we got Punchline, who's poisoned uh, Batman with the Joker toxin. And, um, and she's basically just all over the place in Batman's universe right now. It's a great story. I can't wait to see how this story is fleshed out and what are going to be the ramifications with Batman and all his family members involved. Great artwork in this book. This is, if this other book was not coming on, this would be definitely number one in my opinion. Great stuff. So guys, check it out. All right, so next What's number one then? My most anticipated comic book for August 5th, 2020. Well, this one goes to DC's Dead Planet issue two. Yes, I love this series. This seems like it's going to be a better one than the first one. And at the end of the last issue, Webheads, something very, very bad happened to Green Arrow. And let me just say that Dinah was not happy we're going to get the continuation of this series really great as our heroes wind up going back to earth because they wind up getting a distress call from cyborg and they feel well if we can rescue cyborg and if he is the cure to this anti-life equation we need to get him and just of course things went wrong when they went back to earth my gosh the artwork is phenomenal the storytelling is phenomenal and what tom taylor does is he really captures those character interactions and he makes you care for them and that's what makes this book so so good i love it Number one most anticipated book. Guys, check it out. So, there you have it, fans. There are my top 10 most anticipated comics. Love to hear what your most anticipated comics are. And guys, if you want to see a video that has to deal with my thoughts on Punchline, I'm going to leave it right here for you to check out. And until next time, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off. Thanks for watching, guys. See you real soon. Bye.